Hey everyone, this is Gio Will from Life Man Prediction Squared, and I'm going to go ahead and start uh, our first Space Crusade developers vlog uh, tonight. Uh, this will probably go on for uh, several days, or at least day and tomorrow. Um, just because of how long this first one's going to have to be. Um, in order for you to understand some of the stuff I'm talking about, I'm going to have to teach you some ru rudimentary uh, C++. So, it's going to be kind of a tutorial slash uh, adventure into uh, learning C++ for some of you. Uh, before I do anything, I'm going to plug in my mouse here because it's getting low on power. Although I could leave it running, you can see the message that usually displays when it uh, gets too low, but that just becomes too much of a hassle. Alright, so. Uh, first thing to uh, really go over is um, how uh, coding actually works. Um, essentially, what, you, what uh, coding means is that you're typing in commands uh, into, uh, well, really either into a integrated developer environment, I think that's what it's called, development environment program, or into uh, like TextPad or something, or a Notepad. But they are commands which can be uh, compiled into machine code, which is different from the actual code you write in, uh, that will uh, be able to be understood by the computer, and the computer will be able to uh, fulfill the tasks that you have programmed. That's essentially what programming is in a nutshell. Um, it gets a lot more complex than that when you actually dig down into uh, the coding itself. So, uh, to start out with, I'm um, using Visual Studio 2010, as you can see. Uh, Freshmental edition. You can, if, you have, if you are a student at a university, um, you should be able to get this for free, uh, like I did through Microsoft's uh, uh, student programs. But anyway, um, let's see. I think I had my mouse uh, hooked up to the friggin' USB cables that it causes all kinds of difficulty in moving uh, the cable around because it gets caught on shit. Okay, that's better. Anyway, um, so let's just go ahead and start a new project. Just uh, do a simple little project here. Uh, it's going to be console application. Oops, I think we need to name it. So, let's just go uh, title it with what it's actually going to do. So, hello world. Alright, so we're going to go next. Um, console application. If you're going to do a Windows API application, you choose this one. Since we're going to do a console application and leave it there, you want to do uh, empty project. Finish. And bring up this uh, new window here. So what you're just going to do is under source files, you would add a new item. And usually under source files, you will only put uh, CPP files, or at least I do. That's my personal preference. I'll leave the header files in the header, or .h files in the header uh, folder files folder and CCP files or CPP files in the source files folder just to kind of keep them apart and uh, uh, organize like that. But uh, let's just go ahead and I like to just keep my uh, main files called main again just for uh, organizational purposes. So the first thing you need to do when you're writing a program is decide what uh, dependencies you're going to be needing. And what a dependency is, is a file uh, either that you create yourself as a header file or some other file that's already uh, given to you in a library or in uh, the, uh, or by uh, Microsoft in the actual uh, SDK uh, that contains the code for the type of uh, code you're going to be using. Like, for instance, if you're going to be doing a lot of math, you'd probably use uh, CMath as an include. 
you'd include the CMAP dependency. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using the in-out stream, so we're going to go include with the uh, pound sign there, and then uh, angle bracket uh, IO stream. That includes the IO stream file, and you can actually go to that file, I think. There we go. And you can see uh, just um, like what's in here. Essentially, IOStream is dealing with um, C in and C out, and uh, what stands for console in and console out, and those different um, the different uh, stuff for that, and also the I guess Windows uh, stuff as well, I think. Um, but you have that, and we also want to include string which is um, the dependency to add strings, which are basically just um, a string of character, uh, or of characters, I guess. That's what they are, essentially. Uh, so we're going to include string. And in all my programs, I use... Um, Let me see uh, if I can remember here. Uh, include. Yeah, conio.h, which I think stands for connection and out or something. But it has. Uh, that has a. Let's see if that's a git ch. Yeah. That has the git uh, ch thing there, which um, allows you to require the user to press a key to continue. And I just do that because um, I have not, well, maybe not, I have not learned it, but I haven't decided to go out and figure out how to uh, use the built-in Windows thing where it asks you to press a key at the end to end the uh, program. Um, I think I learned it at one point in time, but I've forgotten it, and I've never had the uh, compulsion to go find it again. I just find it a lot easier to use conio, uh, conio.h. Uh, syntax to uh, be able to do that at will throughout the program. Uh, next thing you want to do is you want to declare um, what namespace you're using. Um, however, that's kind of like a nuclear option, if you will. If you know you're only going to be using a certain number of uh, objects from a certain uh, library, you can just uh, you define those specific things like using std uh, string. Um, for example, so that uh, what this allows you to do is, well, I'll show you in a second. Uh, then you need to do a int main. All right, and now you're into the actual code part here. And essentially, this is just indicating that um, this is the main execution uh, code block, if you will. Everything that happens in the program will be executed from a main. Uh, function like this. Uh, essentially, in a, any program ever made, I think, at least in C++ and Java, all execute from the main function. Um, so really, the main function becomes a kind of loop uh, in a lot of ways in a lot of games, or at least um, it's the starting point for games, which then go into other places which loop, and you don't really get back into the main and, like, say, an MMO until you decide to close down the program. But as I was mentioning earlier about the STD uh, string, stands for the, stands for standard library STD. Uh, normally, if you didn't have this, like if I went up here and let's just comment that out, and I try to use and I says try to make a, a string variable uh, name equals well, let's say. Uh, Notice how it's uh, redlined of doom right there. That's because string is undefined, even though you've included string up here. Um, it doesn't know what's this, what string you're talking about. If you're talking about a string from, you know, the standard library or some other library or some standard defin or custom definition of, of string that you have. And so normally, if you didn't have any n using uh, lines up there, you'd use std string and that would define the uh, library. That gets kind of uh, annoying and uh, disorganized and just doesn't look too great when you have a whole bunch of code though. 
So you could use using uh, std string and it does that like that. You could also do it with the nuclear option like I was mentioning earlier using name space std. Which does the same thing as this except um, now you're saying that any uh, objects that you're using in here are going to be from the standard library. And if your project uses multiple libraries, that's probably not uh, a very great option to use in that instance. In most cases, though, uh, I use this because I'm not going to be using any other libraries. I'm just going to be using the standard library. But for this case, I'm just going to, I will, just for the sake of it, be using uh, std string this time. So, <coughs> let's go ahead and put the end on here. So now, uh, as the name of, these, of this uh, project suggests, we're making a Hello World program, which is essentially the... kind of go-to uh, beginner's program that almost every C++ and, code, C++ and coding book uh, has in it as the very first program that you ever write as a Hello World program. Uh, so essentially we're just going to do a couple variations of this. We'll do the uh, standard one. I'm going to go ahead and also one thing you want to do when you're coding is you want to put tons and tons of uh, comments in so that people understand what's going on if you uh, release your source code. Uh, one of the biggest things I have issues with with a lot of these open uh, source projects is that a lot of them do not include enough um, comments in the source code for you to get a good idea of what's going on. Like, for instance, if you look at um, the source SDK code or eAthena, if you're just new, if you're new to those different uh, coding environments and it's getting into it, uh, trying to find your way around is immensely difficult, just because there's almost nothing in there to tell you what's really going on. You have to uh, kind of poke and prod people on forums trying to get them to give up the ghost and help you out. Uh, to figure things out. Or, like me, you just go ahead and start uh, changing things, see, see what happens. If you break something, fix it. And if you don't, then you keep changing things on that particular file until you figure out uh, what you're tr if what you're trying to do is actually accomplished there. That's how I've uh, muddled through some of the uh, things I've been doing early on uh, with uh, GORO and uh, my comment and comment insurrection was just to kind of Prod around, delete a few things, see what happens, see what breaks, figure out what uh, what those particular lines of code do, and learn from those things, and figure out ways to uh, modify that stuff. But so we're gonna say um, that these are gonna be the variable initial uh, no, variable uh, initialization, I guess. Init initial Ah, uh, initialization. I have no clue if I spelled that right, but I don't really care since just an example. Uh, so we're going to do a couple things. First, we're going to have um, string h. Uh, we'll go s h w one, and uh, I'll explain why I'm doing these weird kind of naming conventions in a second. So let's call this one "Hello World." Hello World. Uh, the second one we'll do uh, sh equals hello. And then we'll go string. What didn't I like about that? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Tell us it's just having some brain farts. Sting, yes. We're going to make a variable with a type of sting. Uh, string. It'll even turn uh, blue when there's orcs around. Uh, whoops, we got to see. String W. And some of you probably have already figured out what this is going to be. World. Alright, so. Uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Just two examples here. Uh, so, let's go ahead and explain some of this real quick here. So strings, um, like I mentioned, are essentially just a combination of characters. So if we were going to do, if this was broken down to characters, we would actually just be using the single uh, apostrophe like this for each letter. 
and this essentially is what uh, strings do. Then you have the space. Just to kind of give you a visual representation of what a string is. So essentially, each of these would be uh, a character variable. And um, you would add all these together to form a string. And that's essentially what the code does on its own. What the string code does uh, automatically is take these characters and put them together. So you take like maybe 15 lines of code and compress it down to one. It's a very, uh, very uh, time uh, saving feature. Um, and so naming conventions. Essentially with naming conventions, uh, you always want to try and follow, well I always try to fo follow a certain type of naming convention with everything in, that I'm doing in a, in a program so it's all uniform. Um, in this case, and normally what I do is I have one small letter that indicates either, in this case, the S stands for string, and the second, uh, everything after that. Uh, is kind of an identifier for whatever it is like for the first one here. Actually, let's take the one off. We have a string hello world, so string hw. Um, we have a string name, string that contains hello, so string h, and world string w. Um, for variables for classes, which I'll get into a little bit later, uh, that are like related to the class, I might do the first letter of the class as a lower letter, the first letter, and then uh, the rest again something descriptive. So like say player name would be p name. Um, and if you have anything like I have here, like if I have anything here where it's um, everything is uh, acronym acronymized, acronymized I guess, to uh, create my own word here. I always uh, just do capitals for each for each uh, letter of the words. Um, normally, at the last, the last word will be totally filled out. Uh, so, in other words, I would do world for that one. Uh, hello and world again down here. Normally, but I'm just going to leave it short and simple on this. So now you're wondering what are we going to do with these things? Well, we're going to. Well, the first one we're going to just print out to the command window, and then we're actually going to add the second two together and then print those out to the command window. And you're probably wondering, how the hell do you add a string to another string? Well, it's pretty much the same as how you add numbers together. You add the first string to the second string to create, an, to create a uh, longer string. So first we want to use C out, as I mentioned before, console out with uh, the uh, double angle brackets there. And everything that you print out um, in a string, if it's not going to be a variable, has to be within uh, quotation marks. So in this case, since we're doing a uh, variable, printing out a variable, all we have to do is uh, is hw. And then end l to end that line and start another. If you don't have the end l there, everything kind of uh, will smash together on the single line until it wraps around after it hits the edge. Uh, for the next one, c out. Hmm. What doesn't it like? c out is not identified. Oh. That's why. STD C out. Possibly. That's interesting. Uh, I have a stream up here. Kind of using namespace qualify name is required. Oh, whoops. Yep, that was it. See, that's a, that's one of the hazards of not using the namespace. Is that you anything that uses a uh, standard uh, double uh, colon like that needs to have a an a uh, definition at the top. Uh, std sin. Well, we won't be using sin on this one. Actually, just count. So there we go. Uh, and l. Uh, I guess we gotta do and l too. I was wondering about that. Using std and l. And again, we missed the second colon. There we go. So count, uh, then we want to go sh plus uh, sw, I guess. 
Let's put a space at the beginning of this one, though, so we don't have a run-on word there. Uh, SW. And again, uh, any kind of reference to uh, variables, which is what these are here, are going to have to be case-sensitive. Uh, and L. Then we'll do the uh, underscore get ch at the end there, and now we can go ahead and uh, run it. I'll build it first. <coughs> so, once succeeded, if we open up the uh, let's see, open the Windows Explorer and go find the file somewhere. Here we go. And we can run it. So there you go. Hello world. Uh, twice. And as you can see, the second one, it adds the two together. Well, essentially, you could have done that anyway, so that's actually a little bit of a cheat. You would have That would have happened anyway. For instance, uh, I could have gone... Let's go ahead and leave that like that, but I could have also gone... Um, taken that out. I could have just uh, done this. It would have the same effect, as you can see. So we actually want to do something different then. Let's say string s2 um, equals uh, sh plus sw. And we won't need that anymore. And then we can do a second one here for um, SHW2. And uh, go ahead and rebuild it and run it. And there you have it. Three different ways to do the Hello World program. So ho hopefully I haven't lost anybody just yet, because it's, be, it's about to get a little bit more complicated. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and uh, kill all this code here, and we're going to go ahead and just make a simple little program here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, switch to using namespace. Space STD. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, well, I won't do header files just yet. We'll go ahead and do prototypes. A prototype, uh, in this case, is going to be a uh, function that's defined and uh, declared inside of a uh, CPP file. Um, the prototype is what declares it, though. So it usually goes after the namespace. So we'll say uh, function prototype uh, prototypes. So let's, let's make a dice function uh, that will roll a die and return a value. And also then we'll have uh, a loop which will run the program until the user will tell it to stop. So we're going to say, well, let's go ahead and have it return an int, an integer. So int uh, roll dice. Uh, we won't uh, have any parameters. And at the end of the file is where I usually declare them. So we'll go int uh, roll dice. And then you just uh, use the same uh, angle uh, or uh, yeah, angle brackets there. Well, not angle brackets, um, curly braces. These are the angle brackets. Uh, we're just going to say... Um, well, we'll have to get a little more detailed here. So, first we're going to have to add in, uh, I think, CSTDlib. Trying to do this from memory here. Include CSTDlib. And uh, there's one other one, CTime.
And what these two are going to do here is going to be, I'll put a thing here, uh, four uh, seated random. And we'll also do then, we'll also include an int Hmm. I need to check something real quick here. Uh, I think they're actually done as structs in uh, my other projects, but we're going to check it. And don't let any of this code confuse you, just uh, kind of try to ignore it for the moment. See all this uh, weird looking code here. Um, let's see, we want to go to random h. <coughs> So now those are done by, those two are done by ints, but what about range? So range is a struct, okay. So we'll have to get into the class struct discussion earlier than I thought, but we won't do it in a different file, we'll do it here. You can um, declare classes and structs inside of a CPP file, but I just find it to be too uh, messy usually. But in this case they're going to be relatively small, so we'll do it here. So, um... Now, the, the difference between a class and a struct is that a class is a more robust uh, uh, I don't know, entity, I guess you can call it. Uh, it can do many more things, whereas a struct has very specific uses, like for instance, structs can't contain functions, I don't think. Um, but structs can contain uh, certain values. They can't uh, declare anything that's private or public, or maybe they can, I'm not really sure, on that point, while uh, classes can. But um, essentially you can think of a struct as a stripped down version of a class. So we're going to say range struct. A struct stands for structure, by the way, in case you're wondering. So struct range uh, int r for range low uh, int r high and we'll just do we'll leave it at that I think there's uh, there's different ones on this one but uh, we'll get more into that when we get to space crusade uh, so we have our range here now we have to uh, also add the random uh, function here, or random functions rather. So int uh, random. Let me see how do I do them over here. So there's a range, and there's also int a b. I think we'll do uh, the int a b one. That's uh, going to be the easier one to do. So random int a and int b. And these are called uh, parameters. Um, essentially they're just uh, things that will be used within the function that you pass to the function from wherever the function is called from. Um, like for instance in a game a function might uh, have a player name passed to it or an NPC name passed to it for an event. For instance say if you kill uh, an enemy and that enemy is supposed to trigger an event after you've killed it, uh, the uh, enemy name will be passed to an event that is going to be looking for your character having killed that enemy, and once it detects that happening, it will um, commence with the uh, event that's going to happen. So we're just going to have uh, two integers passed into random. So... Roll dice, uh, random, one, two, six, since we're going to be using a die. And then uh, we'll have to go uh, int die equals that, and then return die. And I'll get it more into what the the return does there and what this is about. And then we also have to do the uh, int random. I'm just going to copy, pa copy paste the code from over here. Now 
There's an interesting uh, little factoid here. When you hear of uh, somebody, you know, somebody claiming that a computer generates random numbers, that's not really true. Um, computers cannot generate random numbers. There has to be some sort of uh, algorithm behind them, and uh, most of the time, uh, random numbers generated by a computer are actually not random. So when you hear of like a lottery having a random selection or whatever, they're actually lying. It's not random. It's um, not random in the sense of a chaotic kind of random, tons of numbers being thrown, meshed around together, and one being picked out. The, mecha the mechanical version of um, of lotteries, like where you have a wheel with the balls in it, you pull out a ball, those are random. Um, with the, in the sense of a computer, though, it's all calculated through a specific, or rather through a, uh, an algorithm that's created by the programmer. In this case, we're using this whoops, algorithm. I just opened up a uh, text pad there. Which states that um, the random number that's returned is going to be low plus rand, which is uh, the algorithm being used. Then uh, that's uh, then put through a modulus uh, formula for, or it's uh, calculated in a modulus with high plus one minus whatever the low number is. So in this case, it would be uh, one plus rand. If we go through the rand and do that. Uh, which is going to be using the random seed we'll put in the main. I'll explain that when we get to it. And then that's going to be modulus against uh, 6 plus 1 minus 1. Uh, so 6. And I'll get you a specific number that it will return. So we'll go ahead and close that off. Actually, we'll name these low and high, so uh, these will have uh, definitions. Alright, so. Now, we need to uh, do a few things here. First, we need to seed the random. And to do that, we use... Uh, I think it's time. It might be S then time or something like that. Let me see. Main, main, main. Where's main? Main's not open, so we'll have to open it. Uh, here, yeah. S rand time zero. And essentially, what the time zero is indicating is that it's going to use the uptime counter on your computer. So, essentially, there is a chance that with this kind of a program where the random values are static, that you can, if you open up the program at the specific time, each time, a specific uptime at each time, that you can get the same values. Uh, but that'd be extremely hard to do. But it is possible. So we're going to say srand. Uh, time zero. And this essentially uh, creates that seed for the rand function down here to use. And what we're just going to do is create a small little program here. Um, let's go ahead and create some uh, variables here. Uh, variable initialization. So we're going to use uh, some new variables now. We're going to use a boolean variable, which is essentially a variable that can be true or false. Um, in this case, we're going to say bool uh, continue, or let's say um, p continue for player continue. You can also use u for user continue. Uh, p continue, and that's not spell right. There we go. Equals, and we're just going to set to false at first. Or no, true at first. Alright, now we're going to call it quit. Screw that. Quit. That's a better uh, descriptor for that. And we're going to call it false. And so what we're going to do with this bool is... Um, we'll also make a... Uh, character uh, variable for p choice. <coughs> Let's go user choice. U choice. And we're going to set it to uh, blank. 
All right, so program code. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say count uh, welcome to Dice Master 5002. Some corny, cheap ass name like that. And go ahead and close that off. And now we're going to say, uh, now we're going to put in this, uh, use this, put this bool to work here. We're going to make a while loop. Essentially, well, it's technically called a do, do while loop. And essentially what it does is it uh, takes a specific, uh, attribute uh, that you put in the while uh, if clause, if you will, and whenever that, um, while that uh, attribute or while that condition is true, um, the while loop will continue. So, for example, uh, as long as quit equals false, the while loop is going to continue processing the code within it. So, while Actually, it's lowercase. While quit is false. And you could do while quit equals false. That does the same uh, thing there, but it's much uh, quicker to use the uh, exclamation mark, which stands, which is a universal kind of uh, operator to mean no, or uh, as long as, you know what I mean, no, or in this case, uh, well, it means not equal to when used in its proper and uh, proper uh, uh, form. So, like we would do, quit does not equal true. That's how that would normally be used if you're going to use it in this kind of a setting. However, when you use it in conjunction with a bool, you can actually use it along with the bool to mean uh, a specific. Uh, value. So in this case, it's indicating that while quit is not true. If we had this gone, it would be while quit is true, which would make sense in relation to the program. So while quit, while, while quit equals false, we want to run this program. So we're going to say uh, count rolling die. I'll put dots there. And then we will call the uh, roll dice function. And so all you have to do to call it is just say roll dice. I really should just be roll die. Think about it, since we're only using one of them. And that will call the function. Of course, you have to add the uh, parameter thing there. Uh, and then after that happens, we want to add another empty space, empty line. So we let's do a count and L to make an empty line there. And then we'll say count A space then um, let's also add an int D value equals zero. Uh, int D value was rolled. Out, then we'll say, uh, do you wish to continue? And what I like to do with these is, um, if it's just simple things, I'll just put a yes or a no here at the end just to kind of simplify things. Um, then what we want to do is, what I'll do with these is I'll leave this uh, open-ended so that what happens, oh wait, no, my mistake, we do the end L here. Then what I like to do is I like to put a prompt that indicates that you're supposed to input something. So it's just not sitting there blank on a blank thing with people wondering what's going on. So I like to go count and just leave a, a left-facing angle bracket <coughs> there indicating that uh, you're supposed to put something in there. And uh, we'll leave that open-ended so that the uh, player's or user's entry actually appears on that line next to the, the uh, angle bracket there. 
and then we'll put uh, we'll use sin, which stands, or I guess sin you can call it, uh, c n, to uh, obtain the player, the user or player's um, entry there into that line. So in this case, we'll use c n, and we want to set it to u choice. Now, you can do this uh, next part one of two ways. You can use an if or if then clause, or you can use a switch. Uh, I'll show examples of both here. Uh, first, we'll do another empty line here. So let's say uh, if then statement. So we'll say if u choice uh, equals equals, which just means if it equals. Um, and now you want to make sure that you do two versions of this. You want to do a capital and a lowercase version of the specific letter you're looking for. So in this case we'll do uh, character Y or if U choice equals equals uh, capital Y in case they do a lowercase or capital Y. And then we'll say, um, so if you wish to continue uh, Oh, let's say no. Let's just say no. Let's do no. So that's uh, more accurate. So if you don't want to continue, we would uh, run this code here, which would turn quit to true instead of false. So quit equals false. And that will actually break the while loop and continue on with the program. Uh, you can then use an else clause to uh, define something else. So if um, for example, if you put in yes or some other character, this code will uh, execute. And we'll say, we'll actually do something here. We'll say, uh, count re-rolling die. I shall put a empty uh, line there as well. So that's essentially what the uh, if then statement is. Then you can go with a uh, switch. And a switch is slightly different uh, from an if then statement and its um, syntax, but it essentially does the same thing. Uh, we use switch and then you put in the, uh, if you spell it right first, then you put in the uh, object it's going to be looking at. So or variable it's going to be looking at. So in this case, it's uChoice. And you can do this with either uh, integers or characters, but you can't, I don't think you can do it with strings. You might be able to, though. Uh, you could also do it with actual commands. Like, for instance, um, Windows uses a switch to tell what uh, buttons are being pressed on the keyboard and mouse, and then uses those commands to execute uh, code. But in this case, we want to just go with switch uh, uChoice. And then uh, we use cases for the, instead of ifs, uh, if statements for the uh, checks. So if case, in this case is going to be case u, and you can also do multiple cases. You can also do case, or actually it should be an, uh, no. And then you can also do a case uh, n, and it'll happen, um, this block of code will now be executed either by a lowercase n or an, epic, or an uppercase n. And we'll say, uh, well, let's put a thing here. Let's see, uh, see out, uh, ending program. Thanks for playing. So uh, in this case, we're going to just go ahead and uh, copy-paste this into there. And then you could you could do a uh, case for each Y, but in most cases, what you want to do with uh, switches is just use the other option, if there's only two options, as the default. And what the default is about is if um, the user inputs a choice that's not represented by the menu, it will actually act as a failsafe. If you don't put that there, 
what happens is that the switch will actually go into what I call death roll. It will uh, execute everything within the switch and then uh, crash the program. <coughs> and so the default prevents that. And you also, before I forget, you want to put a break at the end of this to prevent that same thing. The break essentially just tells the switch that it's uh, supposed to stop running. Uh, so break effectively acts the same way as this quit false does for the while loop. It tells it to exit the switch. Uh, then let's do uh, the default. Default. Uh, and then we'll do the code from here. Actually, no, we will do that. Uh, see there. Uh, break. And close it off. I also like to denote when a switch ends with a uh, message here or comment, just so it kind of keeps things in perspective. Um, in the older version of Space Crusade, I'll show you that right now, actually. And you'll see exactly why I like to do that for in a second here. Uh, Planet Bomber was the original name for the program. The unoriginal original, uh, unoriginal original name I had for it. But uh, you'll see here in a second what I mean by why I like to do that. Because uh, we have, if I haven't deleted it yet. This was the old station uh, CCP file. And as you can see, I used a lot of switches here. And... Uh, I had literally, I think, six switches deep at some points in time. And see, so essentially what it does is, is, is we're uh, indicating uh, what switches, like, for, yeah, yeah. for example here, all this code you're saying here, all this code here is part of a single, uh, single, uh, let me get to the proper one here. Uh, let's see, selection 5. I'm trying to figure out where... Even even with these there, it's hard to, harder as hell to tell, figure out where stuff's at. Uh, selection 1, case 2, selection 2, case 2. For loop, end. Okay, so that's for the for loop. Um, where's one for the switch, though? Case two, Okay, so here's case 2, end. So as you can see how deep this goes. So we have uh, selection for case two. In this case, um, that was the default. Then you also have selection for end, so you know where that's coming from. And then you have um, the case one end for selection three. And it's just really complicated. And uh, I like the way that I'm doing it now a lot better, uh, just because it's not so crazy like this. But you can see why I like to do that for. Um, just has a little bit more uh, organization to it. So we'll just say uh, U choice uh, switch end. All right, and then we'll use another one of these for the while loop end. Alright, so now we're back out into the main uh, function outside of the while loop. And we want to add a uh, git ch command here. And that will close off the... Uh, see, so that closes off the main now. Um, actually, we didn't need to put that there. Normally, <clears throat> they suggest for ints that you put a return zero here or something. Uh, I don't normally do that, though. But since the int is supposed to return something, uh, you should actually do that. So I guess I will do that here. And what I mean by the int is supposed to return something, uh, essentially the int, the main here is actually really a function, and uh, it's an int function. And any function that has a variable, or not really a variable type, but just a type at all, is supposed to return something of that type value. So for instance, like for these, these are both um, int functions, so they both return an int variable. Uh, functions that don't return anything usually use uh, void. Well, there's a thing I missed right there. That uh, 
semicolon. So like uh, I would do void um, print or something like that to have a uh, function that really doesn't return anything, but that 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 does execute code. So let's go ahead and see if this will compile and run. So we will use clean to clean out the previous uh, previously built file and rebuild it. So we have some warnings and we have some errors. And here's the this is the other part of being a programmer is dealing with errors. Dealing with errors can be can be one of two things. It can be an interesting experience, uh, a learning experience, or it can be a rip your hair out and smash your head against a brick wall experience. It all depends on uh, how many errors you have and how stubborn the errors are to fix. Uh, for example, of how errors can be uh, generated, how easily they can be generated. Let's see, somewhere it's saying something's wrong. So, uh, first error is range followed by int is illegal. Did she forget a semicolon? So where is that at though? Line 20. Seem to go to line 20. Uh, 30, 20. No, that's not it. So where, let's see, struct. Oh. Again, it's just how easy that is to, uh, just that one little semicolon cause these errors here. Let's go ahead and try to rebuild it now. Oh, what's going on? What happened to the solution manager? Oh, there it is down there. Okay, let's go ahead and rebuild. And as you can see, succeeded. So that one little uh, missing semicolon there uh, made a train wreck of the compile for the file. That's really uh, how little things can affect uh, programming like that. And in huge uh, programs, if you have one thing wrong but you don't know where it's at, like you can have something that's wrong in, wrong in a specific header file that's causing problems in a different header file or a different uh, C++ file, or CPP file, technically it's C++ is what it stands for, um, that's linked to that file, and you'd have to search every single header file that's attached to it that you've made to figure out where the problem's coming from. Uh, normally that doesn't happen now. That only happens in rare cases where header files cause problems in other files. Usually you'll get an error that states that there's a problem in this specific header file. I have had problems, though, that have had that kind of an issue with them. Um, when I was writing the original... Uh, Space Crusade program, I ran into a problem where uh, reinitial reinitialization of variables or resetting of variables was causing some weird behavior where uh, variables just stopped working all of a sudden. Uh, whole strings of them had stopped updating properly. And I tracked it down to that, but it took uh, five hours to figure out what was going on. I've had times where uh, header files just inexplicably, or inexplicably um, just explode for whatever reason and don't work anymore. Uh, but let's go ahead and run this file now. And we can see what happens. Go ahead and just uh, reload it. So, here we go. Welcome to Dice Master 5002. Rolling die, a zero was rolled. Do you want to continue? Yes. And here we see that we have an issue right off the bat. It's not uh, providing us with a proper uh, value there. So the question becomes is why? That's another interesting interesting part about being a programmer is you have to be able to self-diagnose issues. So what we'll do is, is um, let's go ahead and check these uh, with the debug. Debugger here. And what I'm going to do is, we have uh, the watch down here. That's not it. Uh, we want to go... Well, I guess that is the value, value we want to be watching here. Uh, so... High, low... Come back... And still zero. So we didn't figure out why that was happening. Well, 
Well, you know, that is very a very interesting uh, little thing that I overlooked. <laughs> now, you may be wondering why it was always there. Well, this is the reason. I actually didn't uh, make the return value for roll die <clears throat> e uh, equal to D value. So, again, there's a little... A little mistake in uh, derail entire program. So we have that in there, and now it should work. Um, actually, no. We're just going to go ahead and go to uh, release, uh, remove the breakpoints, and build. And then we'll run it again. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we go. There's a 5 now. There's something different. Roll it again. We have a 3. Rolled again. How come we have re-rolling die twice? That's interesting. Oh, I know why. Because we're running it. Uh, we're running both these at the same time. So you can see that they're both working properly. Um, the else is being triggered since it's not n or lowercase n or capital n, and down here it's also being triggered because it's not lowercase n or capital n here. Um, so we got a three, two, one, four. Six, four. So as you can see, it's pretty much randomized. And the very second hit N. Thanks for playing. And what the hell happened? Well, that didn't quite work like it was supposed to. Interesting. It's probably because this is here. For some reason, I don't know why it would be. Oh. Well, you know why? It's because of this. Again, true equals, or quit equals false. Yes, quit equals false is going to make a while statement that runs while quit is false end. No, I don't think so. So there's another example of how you can ethically fail just by making a couple mistakes. So now we can... Uh, we go with this, and it will actually work when we do now. There you go. So that's essentially uh, a simple program. Um, let's get more into classes now, and some more complex uh, topics on that. I'm just going to go ahead and make a new uh, project here. Let's call it uh, Classes. And it's going to be a console application. Do the same thing as before. Console, empty project, finish. And here we are, have the new project here. We'll go ahead and close that main. Create a new main here. So a class is really a an object, if you will, that contains variables and functions. And uh, those variable and functions have, variables and functions have different levels of protectiveness or protectedness inside of a class. Um, you have essentially three levels of protection. You have protected, ironically, and then you have uh, private, which means that um, the variables can only be seen and modified by that specific class. Protected means the variables can be seen. Uh, by other classes, but they cannot be modified, and in a public situation, those variables and functions can be seen by, and altered by, well, any variable in a uh, public situation can be seen and altered by any other class, and functions uh, can be used by any other class. So we're going to go ahead and do the, oops, main here. I'm just going to go ahead and make a short kind of little RPG-esque type of thing. Uh, well, really character creation, let's put it that way. Uh, not a full RPG game that would take too long for this example. It's a mini, uh, mini introduction into C++. Uh, then we're going to do a header file. Uh, new file, uh, header file, it's .h file. We're going to call it player. Uh, then we're also going to do a range and random 